Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in on my next get ready for leak start video. This video will be about effective delving. So to begin with, you're, you can speed up the video if you want to. Just move it up to 1.25. Someone did that on my earlier video and that helped them keep focused because I can talk a bit, bit slowly sometimes. But I will go through the the following seven topics, planning your descent, and where do you get the fossils, delve biomes and fossils, finding secret pathways, delve special camps and cities, how to make currency with delve, and a big fossil crafting chart. I will primarily just leave that on the screen for a while so you can look at it. But first off, planning your descent. So what I like to do when I leak start is just go down as fast as possible. So just run straight down. I try to focus on targeting the asteroid camps that I find when I go downward. And I try to pick the longer roads sometimes. So I have a lot of darkness that I can run in where I look for asteroid and I look for dynamite and I look for flares that I can use. Usually I kind of try to upgrade um, the darkness resistance and light resistance and sulfide capacity uh, equally, but I tend to focus a bit more on the darkness resistance so I can be in the darkness longer. Furthermore, I also upgrade the amounts of flares that that I can have, so I have more flares to use in longer delve runs, but also their radius and their duration, because they're quite cheap to begin with, and it really helps a lot. Um, you can start delving when you hit monster level 80, 68, so this is where Nico stops delving for you, and you will need to delve downward yourself. In the story, if you end up filling up your your sulfur storages, you can do a couple of azurite runs just to upgrade your sulfide capacity, and then you will have enough until you hit the maps. I usually, before I start mapping too much, I use up all my delve, uh, all my sulfur. And then I uh, try to save up sulfur so I can use all my uh, Nico missions at tier 5, and then 10, and then 16. While you're in the darkness, you want to look for these uh, pure azurite veins and rich azurite so you get azurite faster and thereby you can upgrade faster. Um, so when you run in the darkness, there are fossils, but they are primarily behind fractured walls and in fossil camps. There are both uh, tier 3 and tier 4 fossil camps, but I will get into that later. So how do you spawn? How do you see where there's a fractured wall? So when there's more distance be between the, the two nodes, there will be fractured walls. Like, there's no fractured wall here, but there are here and here and here. But you can also see it at the cost. Like, if this cost me 500 to pass between these, then this will cost me 1000. So if the the double cost, then it's uh, one fractured wall. And if it's triple cost, then it's two fractured walls. Um, I prefer myself having high movement speed and using a quartz flask so I can get facing. The facing is really important so you can pass these monsters in the darkness without having them blocking your way out if it's very hard to use a movement skill. And I usually use flame dash myself or dash or leaf slam. These are the best gap cross movement skills that you can use in the darkness. Um, when you're running in the darkness for the fractured walls, just look for this icon and then you can use dynamite to to open it up. I've recorded this very quick video where I, where I run to get some puzzles. Here 
here, here I find uh, a fossil just out there too. And here are uh, Frank's walls where I used the dynamite on, and I find some shit. So there are different delve biomes and I like to plan which biomes I really want to run in when I'm playing a soul cell farm. But if you're in trade, you should just look up the prices on the most expensive fossils and try to run in these areas. And they are determined by what's uh, the most meter built and if you use fossils to craft these items. So you can see here in regular mines, which will stop coming at the uh, monster level 86, monster level 83. Um, I like to run in fungal and petrified forest if I play my essence strain build, because there's a bunch of dense fossils dropping here, but also aberrant, which is used for chaos and perfect fossils, which you can change the quality on items with, and corroded fossil. Um, these are good for bleed bows and plus level bows. Um, they're usually very expensive at league start. If you're running a, a life elemental build, then running frozen hollow is very good, and magma fissure because you can get the enchanted fossil, and you can get pristine and prismatic. So when you come in into these uh, fossil rooms behind the fractured doors, the fossils often drop two, two times fossils. So you can see here my second column is displayed here. So if you find a bound fossil, you will also get jackal fossils from the bound fossil. And the same goes with perfect fossil where you get aberrant and corroded where you get dense. And so on. So serrated get frigid, pristine get prismatic, and that's very important because when you're running in frozen hollow, you cannot get pristine fossil normally, but the prismatic fossil actually gives you pristine. So that way you will be covered by getting both life fossils and the elemental roll fossils. Furthermore, you can get some special fossils, these tangled, hollow, fractured, faceted, glyphic, and bloodstained. But they don't drop in Smuggler's Dash. They don't drop here. This is only a tier 3 fossil camp. As you can see, it has the, the fossil mark. You need to look for tier 4. And it's all the other fossil camps except Smuggler's Dash. There you can get the good fossils, okay? So you need to focus primarily on getting these over uh, delving a long way for a smuggler's test because you will usually only get these regular fossils there. So how do you get into these secret passive ways where there's of often these very expensive fossils later on and also some special delve camps? There's a, a very good rule about the intersections. They need to have one, three or four ways connected. So you can see here all these have four, right? And we want to get into this. So we look at all these and they all have the the rules except this one. So when we've analyzed it, we can see this has only two and it needs to have one or three. There are some few exceptions, but they aren't important to go on. So what we do is that we go into this delve intersection and start looking for a fractured wall and we go and blow it up with dynamite and then we go back and you have opened up a new path to this minion node. So there are some special camps that I like to target myself depending on what kind of build that I'm running. like. Um, we have the Chaos, Physical, Cold, Fire and Lightning. These drop Curse on Hit rings. So the Chaos drops Despair on Hit and Physical drop Vulnerability on Hit. And then we have uh, the same with Cold, Fire and Lightning. So you can reduce re resistances with a Curse on Hit level 5 ring. Um, the same with the Minion. 
they can drop these plus one spectre chests and also plus one zombie and skeletons and the the same with the amulets but you cannot get a plus one spectre amulet sadly so the one plus one spectre chests are usually worth a lot in league and they are really good to target furthermore you also get a bunch of extra fossils that you can use for crafting and essences so in the in the chaos camp in the chaos camp you get aberrant and in the cold you get frigid and in the fire you get scorched and in lightning you get metallic and jacked in physical and bound fossil in minion you also have some special cities um, usually there aren't any bosses in these cities it's just uh, a city node where you can get maps and there's a bunch of extra chests in there that drops currency and stuff like that so they are worth checking out but they aren't as powerful now as they used to be um, so the first kind of boss that you can encounter is in the vault city where you can fight I, I totally and then Abyssal City is Kugel. And lastly, the hardest of them is All. All is very difficult to fight. And he he usually spawns uh, from uh, depth 180 and, and downward. And he's very hard. So he, he will take you a long time to fight and get down. But the thing about also with the Delp bosses is that they get harder the deeper you get and the more mods they get. So if you find one very early with no mods they can be very easy but they can also be extremely difficult. So how do you make currency with Delp? Um, instead of trying to auction off one fossil at a time just save up a bunch of fossils and sell them in bulk the same you can you can do the same with the one or two socket resonators that you can buy from from nico himself with their despair as right you have so the small ones cost two and three hundred and the large uh, two socket costs 500 to 750 and then it's not worth buying the the three socket resonators usually because people usually craft with one or two circuits you can also sell the bosses for challenges if they are uh, in the challenge league and there are challenge then people will usually pay some exalts to fight and kill your boss and delve if it has the uh, the right level the plus one spectre chests are usually worth a lot and also the cursor on hit rings can be worth a lot early leak. So when you go into pathofexile.com slash trade, you can click on the bulk item exchange and then you can look at people's stock. You can say that they need to minimum have 10. So you don't compare prices with people that don't have many fossils because they are usually cheaper and and it's just stupid so searching this um, going down to the first one that sells 10 that was 150 chaos and that's in this league uh, usually they will be more expensive because it's so easy to craft and harvest so what you do when you want to list it yourself is you put it into a premium stash and set that for public and then you put on the negotiable price on chaos the first lump number you list is the price that you want and the, then you divide by the amount you want to sell this way they will always be listed like you want to sell 10 at a time and you want 150 chaos but they will also be listed for 15 chaos each but the you will also say in the, in the bulk trade that you want to sell 10 at a time. So in this uh, big chart that I've put in here, um, I will just leave it on the screen for a small amount of time so you can see what the different fossils do. Um, in my guides I usually try to say which fossils are good to craft with. Um, I like crafting uh, chaos gear with aberrant fossils and I also like 
crafting belts with dense fossil or pristine if I need life or energy shield and then I like using the sanctified fossil on belts um, alongside prismatic because that way you either get life or energy shield and you get resistances and then the sanctified fossil will make your rolls lucky but also prefer higher tier rolls and on the belt you don't want special rolls you just want very high tier the same goes with boots where I like to use um, the shuddering fossil because it removed the mana mo modifiers but also add speed modifiers and either pristine or dense the, depending on if I want energy shield or life because it removes the other option and then I also like to use sanctified on the, on the boots because that makes uh, the movement speed higher rolled and the life higher rolled. Okay, that was the short video. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to leave a comment if you have any questions and remember to subscribe. Have a nice weekend and see you next Friday. Goodbye.